Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. How y'all doing? It's Kaiser and happy Monday. <clears throat> we have got a little bit of a interesting situation here. So Godzilla minus one opened at the box office this past weekend. And surprisingly, this movie actually did incredibly well for itself at the box office for its opening weekend. And this is a movie that had a lot of things riding against it. And while it did get beat out for the top two slots, it did manage to stick a actual very nice third place at the box office over the weekend. And that definitely deserves some praise, especially for what I'm seeing in this. Everything that I've seen, everything I've heard, points to this movie being an absolutely amazing film that everybody needs to go see. I know everybody likes to think that I get down on movies and I sit there and just like to, you know, piss all over everything all the time. Seriously, uh, what I want to do is anytime there's a movie that's bad, I'll tell you it's bad. If there's a movie that's good that I think you should go see and I think that people should go support, I will tell you about it. And Godzilla minus one is the movie you should go out there and you should support because they just made the big theaters or not the big theaters, but the big studios like Disney and Universal and Blo and uh, Warner Brothers made them look like complete fools over the weekend. And it is amazing to watch. And so several of the other art, uh, other articles being run on this Godzilla minus one box office opening weekend blazes to top three just behind two blockbusters. So, yeah, strangely enough, the only other two things that were really in the way of this movie were Beyonce and uh, Hunger Games, if I, if I remember right. And, yeah, it, it's kind of wild. Say, so even Hollywood Reporter getting in it, saying Godzilla Minus One... Review the kaiju feature a, an emo, as emotionally involving as it is scary. Which, strangely enough, that's what a lot of people are saying, is that there is actually an emotional heart to this movie. There is a human element. They make you care about the humans in a movie where, up to now, really, they've never really mattered that much. But I'm going to read this real quick. This is just, I, I tried to make sure I... I've picked out some very specific points here. But after 70 years and dozens of films later, Japan's favorite kaiju is roaring louder than ever with in this latest big screen incarnation, which may be one of the best Godzilla films ever. It's like arriving seven years after Shin Godzilla, uh, the Japanese-made Godzilla Minus One puts an American effort of recent years to shame... I'm looking at you, 1998 Godzilla. With a combination of spectacular monster movie thrills and genuine emotion. I say this movie, the, the director was also the writer and also was credited with the visual effects. Apparently had a heavy hand in all of, the, of these things. You're talking about a director who not only understands writing, understands directing, and understands visual effects. You've got this and director uh, Takashi Yamazaki. So that's a huge thing in its favor. This here also saying, in addition to the human drama that distinguishes this effort, there's no shortage of spectacular set pieces. And then here, despite a reported budget of a mere $15 million, the scenes in which Godzilla goes on a rampage are superbly executed, making it one of the or making one think that the major Hollywood studios, which think nothing of spending 10 times that amount for similar efforts, should immediately head to Japan to take some lessons. Wow, that is scathing. <laughs> Emotional damage! <laughs> yes, so I, I need to call out here. Yes, this movie had a production budget of $15 million. Yeah, right here. Where did it go? Yeah, production budget. 
only $15 million. That is insane. This movie's production budget was smaller than Five Nights at Freddy's and looks incredible. Some of the best visual effects we've seen in a while and has turned in astonishing numbers. The domestic box office, 11 million. International box office, 23 million. Totally 34.031. So now, again, I'm going to, I, I, I hear what a lot of people are going to be saying in the comments section on this one. Well, I mean, that's not a lot of money. And I mean, it's not making a huge amount. Okay, this is the Christmas box office season. This isn't the summer box office. So the numbers are going to be a little bit smaller for one. Two, you also have to contend with the fact that this is a, a movie. This is a foreign film. This is a movie that is in its native language. It is subtitled only. And it's playing at about half of the screens that everything else is playing this year. It's kind of one of those special event type of movies. So a lot of theaters didn't even take it up. And it's doing, um, the fact that it's taken third place at the box office over the weekend is absolutely insane. Let me go ahead and throw this up here. So this is the box office chart for the weekend. So number one, Renaissance, a film by Beyonce, took number one with 21 million. Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbirds and Stakes took 14.5 million this weekend. Godzilla minus one, 11 million dollars. Rolls Band Together took in 7.6. Wish took in only 7.4. Napoleon 7.1. And way, way down here in sixth place, the Marvels only took in $2.5 million at the box office this entire weekend. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this movie's making Disney and all these other studios make look like absolute fools I mean again as as much as we've seen the Hunger Games pull in numbers the Hunger Games right now still with a production budget of about $100,000 with marketing and everything I would say probably needs $250 million to break even is only still currently pulling at 243 million right now global so just on the edge not quite profitable yet but definitely on the edge of that and meanwhile this little movie production budget 15 million has already made itself profitable in one weekend and i guarantee you as word of mouth begins to spread on this movie that is only going to get better and bigger, and that is going to grow exponentially. I mean, the craziest part about this is that even Rotten Tomatoes, the audiences and the uh, critics right now are lining up. Currently 97% by critics and 98% with audiences. This is one to go see, folks. Support good movies. If we don't support them, we're just going to get the same old crap fed to us from all the big studios. And we're to show the studios that we need, we mean business and they need to change their game up. We need to go support things that are good. We need to tell, you know, the studios to go screw themselves whenever, <laughs> whenever they turn in crap like wish and the marbles. Anyway, folks, that's all I got for today. Go check out the comment section down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Also, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.